One of those families, a couple of those families we'll talk about, uh, one family from Shannon County, the Buffingtons. I just like the name Buffington. I, you know, they're worth talking about just, just for that. But the Buffingtons came in the 1850s. You can see there they actually came from Illinois in 1854. I don't know if, if their arrival was, it was just coincidence that it was the year the Graduation Act was passed that really reduced the price of land or, just, or they actually uh, were influenced by the Graduation Act. But they came uh, across the, uh, they crossed the Mississippi at Chester, Illinois, which is just downriver from Cape Girardeau and made their way across the Cottaway Hills into Shannon County. Uh, they originally settled on Blair's Creek, and then eventually moved to Mahan's Creek, south of Eminence. And while they were building, the first year they were there, they lived in a tent. The family did. This was a large family, too. I guess they lived in tents, probably, but... Uh, but we know from uh, the, the narrative left by one of the Buffingtons in the early 1900s writing about his experiences coming to Missouri in 1854, we know that the family lived in, in a tent. They uh, built a log cabin the first year they were here. Uh, he mentions that they remember that they're coming... Uh, from Illinois, and they, they had to travel as light as they possibly could. They had one ox cart that they brought over with their, what goods they had in it, and they left a lot of stuff back in Illinois where they came from. They had to make a plow stock, a homemade plow stock when they got here. That's the, the wooden base of the plow that you actually put the plow, uh, the actual plow shares onto. They, he mentions that they didn't have plow lines, the leather straps that you, that you have hooked up to a horse, or in this case, probably an oxen, uh, to guide them while you're plowing, that they made their plow lines out of uh, hickory bark. I mean, these people were living, you know, they were making do with what little they had. He mentions in one case that he worked uh, about a month and a half building a rock fence, and if you go out in the rural Ozarks, occasionally you see these, these rock walls. Uh, and those served, per, they served the purpose of a fence where you didn't have one before. And they also served the purpose of getting the rocks out of the field. You know, if you're going to uh, grow anything in the Ozarks, you're going to have to fight rocks. You're never going to get rid of all of them. But uh, that's one reason you have a lot of rock walls in places in the Ozarks. People have just piled them up to get them out of the field and made made walls out of them, but he mentions building this rock fence for a neighbor farmer for a month and a half, and he was paid with a cow. So at the end of, at the end of his work, the guy gives him a cow, and hopefully it survived and, uh, you know, had calves and you know, pays off in the, in the long run. But this was a, a quite a, uh, a pioneer uh, area. I mean, this was a place that wasn't heavily settled. He mentions that on the creek they live on, that the nearest families are a couple miles away on either side. And this is one of those areas that was not heavily settled until uh, the 1850s when you start getting cheaper land and people start pushing into the farthest reaches of the interior of the Ozarks because this is rugged land over there in the, in the Cottaway Hills. Uh, but the Buffingtons were able to survive on it. And there are probably still Buffingtons over there today. I don't know, but are certainly descendants of this family over there today. Now, a different family, a different look at people coming into the region around this time were the Flanners, who made their way to uh, Dent County. And that's, if you know where Salem, Missouri is, that's Dent County. Uh, in the late 1850s, uh, the Flanners were very different from the Buffingtons. The Flanners, uh, the uh, Henry Flanner, the guy whose diary tells us about his experience coming to uh, that part of Missouri from Ohio, uh, was educated. He was actually coming to Missouri to start a school. He felt uh, that he was being led to, uh, to offer education to uh, the, the destitute and uneducated. And he thought for a while and said, well, the Ozarks sounds like a good place to go to find 
the destitute and uneducated. And, that, and that's one reason he wanted to, he wanted to come some, someplace that was far away from the railroad, far away from uh, the Mississippi River, uh, far away from what he considered civilization. And so he ended up in Denton County, Missouri. But he actually came uh, a different way than some of the other settlers we talked about. He started on a steamboat in Wheeling, West Virginia, on the Ohio River, came all the way down the Ohio, up the Mississippi to St. Louis, and it took him just seven days. Now today, we would think, oh, holy cow, seven days from Wheeling to St. Louis, you know, we could almost walk that, but, but that, was, uh, that was making pretty good time when you think just a few years earlier, uh, you would have been uh, traveling by foot or horseback uh, across there, but now with steamboat travel, seven-day trip at St. Louis, this is the late 1850s. Uh, the railroad has been built at least a little ways west of St. Louis, and he gets on the uh, railroad at St. Louis and rides the rails uh, to Gray Summit, uh, which is still there today. Gray Summit is uh, right before you get to Six Flags. What's, what's the name of that Six Flags town? Yeah, it's, it's what, 20 miles on this side of, if you're on the, if you're on I-44, uh, it's not too far on this side of uh, uh, Eureka. So you're getting in, into kind of the, the outer, outer edges of St. Louis when you get to Gray, but that's where the, the train stopped back in those days. So he had to get off the train at Gray Summit. He traveled by a stagecoach for about nine miles, and then he was on, and then that was it. After that, he was on foot. Uh, traveling into the interior of the Ozarks, and eventually, uh, eventually he does go part of that way by horseback. But he ends up at Lake Spring, which is uh, which is now a small community uh, northwest of of Salem. In yeah, you know, yeah, it's kind of halfway between Salem and Rolla, is where it is uh, today. And he finds a place there. They buy land. He goes back to Ohio, gets his family, and they move out uh, to Dent County, Missouri. He starts a school there, and eventually, uh, according to the, the information I have on him, he eventually leaves Missouri at the beginning of the Civil War. He's kind of run out by uh, pro-Confederates. Uh, he was a, a pro-Union guy. Being from Ohio, that's kind of what you would expect, and, uh, and he leaves and and, uh, but that was another, you know, different experience, another way of getting to the Ozarks in those early days. And we have a few examples uh, like the Buffingtons and the Flanners and the Roundtrees, people who have left us at least a little bit of record that we can tell how they got here, where they came from, what they were, what their intentions were. And they go to very different places. You know, the Buffingtons, we don't really know why they went to Shannon County. They could have, it would have been much easier in a lot of other places. Maybe it was because that's where they could buy land cheap, where it was still available. And maybe, you know, river bottom or creek bottom land that far off the beaten path in Shannon County was still available in the 1850s, whereas in other more desirable places, all the good land was gone, was long gone by the 1850s. Or you would have had to, bought it, to, to have bought it from somebody else and paid a lot more than the government was asking for it. 